Hello and welcome back to yet another Flora and the Novice Explorers video. Today you find us in a spot where we've been chilling out and relaxing for the last week. I know, it's been absolute bliss. Yeah, really lovely, the weather's been beautiful. But we haven't exactly been here all by ourselves. No, we've been camped up for most of the week with Jay and Kate. They seem to pick some fantastic spots for us to join them. And we've been visited by numerous four-legged furry friends. Yeah, a very tame fox, which uh, one night, which we didn't capture on camera, unfortunately, he jumped in the van. I've never been that close to a fox, uh, well, apart from Meg, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we've also had a blonde dog again. We cracked out some wet food. Yeah, wasn't interested in you, was it? No. You were the one that got the closest, but <laughs> very, very timid compared to the fox. Yeah. Madness. We also had a lovely visit from uh, Timothy and Viviana. They reached out and wanted to meet up as they were visiting Sardinia. They came from Italy and we met up with them in their T5. Mm, lovely self-converted van as well. And we had a lovely chat and a good evening with them. So we're only down the road from Algira, which is the place where we got the pizza for my birthday. So every time we've kind of needed civilization, we just head back there and that's where we've done our laundry, our food shopping, we sent a few postcards, things like that. But we also nipped out for a day trip around the old town where there's trebuchets on the top of the old town walls. And we also stopped for some Algiro octopus, which was mwah. Not for me. Not for you. <laughs> Anyway, with all that being said, we've had a really nice time here and it feels kind of weird to be leaving because apart from the campsite that we're in, we haven't been in one spot for such a long time. However, if there's one thing that's going to draw us away from here, that is one of Italy's most scenic roads. So tomorrow morning we get up and we're going to drive the Algira to Bosa Road, which is the most scenic route in Sardinia, if not Italy. And it's also been used on many famous TV and advertising commercials. So here we are at the beginning of the road trip. Algiro sits just behind these rocks over there. And way off in the distance in this direction is Capo Caccia. Yes, and that's where we were a couple of days ago, or weeks ago now, I suppose, really. And it was epic landscape. But today, we've, we're up, we've had our coffee, and we are off to do the 45 kilometers of epic coastal road. So the first stop, we are off down here to Canal della Olmolmolf, which in Catalan translates to Canal of the Dead Man. It is beautiful swimming pools of iridescent water and it's very popular with divers, so let's go and check it out. It's been quite a nice pleasant walk down, but we are starting to battle with the heat somewhat. It's probably in the mid-twenties today, but um, very little breeze, so I'm really starting to feel it. And towards the end of the week, apparently we're going to be pushing 30 degrees, which is going to start to really test me, I think. Eagle eye viewers might think, oh, Callum looks a bit different. That's because I've shaved off my horrendous beard and Meg has had another go at the hair. Very professional, don't you think? Bear in mind, I've got no qualifications in this. Really? I think it's looking lovely. <laughs> Anything to help combat the heat. a longer walk than we expected down to here but it's it's pretty gorgeous it's got rock formation and the color of the sea i'm not really ever going to be sure we're going to like, get over it i don't think the camera will ever do it justice So we're just heading back to the van to go to our next destination and on the footpath we found these empty urchin 
shells, I think they are. There's purple, green and red, which I've never seen them outside of the water before. Quite interesting, like little hedgehogs. And these are eaten here, they're a delicacy. The insides are bright red and they just toss cooked pasta in them with a bit of olive oil and I imagine some herbs and garlic. Not 100% though, but mmm, lovely. Now back on the road, we head south on the Strada Provenciale or SP105 that turns into the SP49 around halfway. If you were to simply drive the route, it would only take one hour, but there's plenty more to see than just the road, as we soon find out. I think, whoa. whoa! I think if you want to do this road trip, it's probably safe to put most of the day aside for this. We're in and out, in and out, in and out. The road is actually really quiet at the moment, but it is a Thursday. So we're trying to take as many videos and pictures as we can because we're not quite sure when we're going to come to the end at the moment. But look at that. Doesn't get much better, does it? I think it's lunchtime, don't you? Should we try and find another epic lunch spot? Well, this isn't too bad. Well, no. So, not a bad spot for lunch. We've got a bit of the local smoked cheese. A bit like mozzarella, I can't remember what the name is. The brownie stuff is um, aubergine, preserved, preserved and like pickled aubergine, really nice and tasty. And tuna stuffed little hot peppers, but we're not in a bad spot to enjoy dinner. So we've just finished our lovely salad, enjoyed this incredible view, but it's time to move on. We were just sat down here looking out to sea, but it was getting incredibly hot just sat in the chair, so I think it's best that we carry on. How far, Captain? I don't actually know, to be fair. <laughs> I haven't got any signal to check, so I'm all a bit disjointed now. Yeah. One thing we did notice was a massive bird. Yeah, I was just flying the drone, just whizzing around, and then all of a sudden in the distance there was just, I don't know what it was. I've read that there's lots of griffins here, but that looked bigger than a buzzard or a kite back in the UK. So I think we're going to need to Google or even call in and see yeah. what Grandad says. It was, it was massive. So needless to say, I brought the drone in and packed it away safe and secure because I do not want to fight with that midair. From our research, it was most likely a griffin vulture. There are two colonies along this part of the coastline, the only colonies in Sardinia. Off to our next pit stop now, which is Cala Compoltitu. It's getting very hot. I need to put our new sun umbrella up. It's a, it's a, it's a sweet one. I think you're going to like it. And let's see if we can get Cal in the uh, sea again. Come on, let's go.
I don't know if it's gonna come across well on camera, but that beach was absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, it was very, very, very small, so we couldn't really film much because there was a lot of people on there and there was boobies on the loose. And Meg, <laughs> boobies on the loose. I was gonna say something a bit more, um, not everyone was wearing a full swimsuit and let people's imagination come to it, but Cow was on booby watch everyone. He wasn't, I was telling him where not to look. Speaking of booby watch, Meg filmed a small spe segment, segment. <laughs> Speaking of booby watch, uh, Meg filmed a small, <laughs> Speaking of booby watch, <laughs> three, two, one. Speaking of booby watch, Meg filmed a small spe <laughs> spe <laughs> Three, two, one. Talking of booby watch, uh, Meg filmed me for a brief period and I realized how bad my farmer's tan has got and that's the, uh, the red to white lines here and probably around my neck. Um, back of your neck's the best. Yeah, we've got a bit of sun today, especially when I was flying the drone. It's burnt the back of my neck. But today has been really, really good so far, but it's not over yet. We're gonna keep heading south down towards Bosa and we're gonna find somewhere to park, make some food and hopefully catch the sunset. Today's been fantastic. So glad we visited the beach. I actually got in again. Thank you everybody and I'm getting braver. It was a lovely temperature, wasn't it, the water? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Clean, clear, yeah. not a scrap of uh, seaweed. That's a good point, not a scrap of rubbish down there either. No. That's always a tiny beach, but perfect. Um, so yeah, highly recommended. It's been really good. We've cooled off, but um, it's still, still hot in it. It's yeah. like six o'clock. Bit of a trek down there as well. I wouldn't wear flip-flops. We were nearing the end of the route. The vistas, colors, and scenery blew us away. But there's so much more to explore in this area. Meg's research had really paid off. So I think this is going to be our home for the night. It's a quiet car park just outside of Bosa Marina. It's quite nice, we're going to have a nice little sunset. Might go and sit on the beach or on the bench over there and eat dinner. Or we could just set up our own little restaurant here. What do you think, Cal? Restaurant? Restaurant. <laughs> So for tonight's tea, I'm going to be cooking some maloredus, which is Sardinian pasta. It's known as the Sardinian version of gnocchi, and it's normally served with Sardinian spicy sausage. But I'm going to shush it up a little bit, and we've got some smoked salmon offcuts and some creamy, creamy sauce. That's what we're going for tonight. So there is another Meggy creation. I'm quite proud of this one. I think it's a bit fusion-y. Um, not 100% Italian. And they're also known as little worms or little morsels and they're shaped with a reed basket. So let's see what uh, Cal thinks to my creation. <laughs> I thought you were going to wind me up. I was going to wind you up. Mmm. Little bit of a kick. Yes. Taste a little bit of a kick in there. Put a bit of Dijon. Mmm. And a little bit of um, whatever the little spice mix I got is. Nice. So let's take a stroll at sunset and just enjoy the last of today's sunshine. I think it might be a bit of a beautiful one, you know. There's something extra special about Sardinian sunsets, especially after a marvellous day of exploring. Good morning, what a... <laughs> Good morning, what a view to wake up to, eh? This car park isn't half bad, and there was an amazing sunset, as you saw last night, just over there behind the uh, thing. What is it? <laughs> Over harbour there. 
pretty quiet in this car park. We slept well and we're ready for the day. We've got our coffee freshly brewed in our new bigger mocha pot, so it's pretty damn strong. Today we've got a few things planned. First of all, we're gonna to go to a natural pool that's next to a beach, so that'll be exciting. It's nice and early, we're gonna hopefully beat the crowds and just see what happens. We're now off to find the Piscina Naturale di Cane Malu. Natural swimming pool of the Malu dog. Oh, translated we... in Google Translate. Do we know exactly where we're going? No, <laughs> we've just tried to drive down there and it's a no-go. So, floor is here, safe, locked up. Let's go and find it. One observation is that we definitely couldn't park up here and I'm glad we parked at the bottom. Two, I've made a poor decision about footwear again. We've got to head down there. Where are we going? There's two people down there and then there's one over there and Google Maps says around this hill, I think. Okay. No promises, so. It should be quiet if it's hard to access like this. Hopefully. <laughs> We're definitely getting off the beaten track this week. I feel as if like this isn't like something that everyone comes to. Never underestimate a woman in flip flops. So. Tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. Uh, I don't think a lot of people come here. Right, let's go and find out what we're actually coming here to see. small step for men and one giant leap for a woman in flip-flops. This volcanic landscape looked extraordinary. It was as if we had landed on the moon. And we finally made it to the natural swimming pool of the Malu dog. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? was magnifico. Never seen anything quite like it. The water was unbelievably clear but I forgot my snorkel and my mask and my yeah my stuff so I don't know what was underneath the water. I can't do the eyes open thing so I hope it wasn't too scary. I'm looking forward to seeing the GoPro footage back see what was actually there but might come back another day and uh, get the snorkel mm -hmm. but it's getting a bit busy now so we're gonna head to a secluded beach which Got to go up back onto the main path and then along a little bit more. So just over the ridge you can see Cala e Moro, which when you pop it into Google Translate means falls and dies. And uh, I can kind of see why. We don't call ourselves the novice explorers for nothing. Um, I really recommend coming down here with proper footwear and not half naked. Because I've bloody caught my leg on the stick. Owie. 
<laughs> and overall it's not the most sensible so but it's been worth it for the beach oh yeah Doesn't so it look gorgeous worth the scratching yeah it's gonna sting when i go in though right let's get down there and find a spot Wowee, what a stunning beach that was and we definitely got Capo Testa vibes from that little private cove we're in and actually because it's so small and quite confined we didn't film with the camera much down there because it felt a bit, I don't know, intrusive but we had a really nice swim, I'm sure the GoPro footage shows me having a whale of a time underneath the water. Going underneath the water? Can you believe it? It's like teaching a toddler to swim. <laughs> so anyway, it's been really nice down there, the water's really warm, especially in the shallows We've dried off now and we're going to head back up this horrendously steep and tricky walk and just get back to the van for some lunch. So we're probably not going to film much on the way back because we've got to really focus because this path is not good, especially in flip-flops like Megan said. So after a spot of lunch back at the van, we have made our way into the main town of Bosa. Bosa is one of the most beautiful and charming towns we have come across so far in Sardinia. Located inland slightly on the river Timo, it's bright and colourful with a relaxed and peaceful vibe. There's always time for a quick gelato pit stop. What flavour have you got? Pistachio, it's melting very quickly. We weaved our way into the Centro Storico, or the Old Town, which is a maze of traditional and brightly coloured terraced houses built into the hillside. Standing alone at the top of the town you will find the castle, but the best views and photo opportunities are found on the river's south marina. Don't forget to check out the old bridge, Ponte Vecchio. Cheers my dears to a wonderful Alghero to Bosa drive. We had a fantastic couple of days with the drive, the beaches, the scenery, it's just been absolutely fantastic. And that pull today was pretty epic. I'm gonna uh, write a blog, I think, about all of our favorite bits of Sardinia at some point, so I'm gonna put that in the link down below. It's gonna be a long list because at the moment we're in a small part of the island, but there's uh, a lot to love. Yeah, huge amount to love, and I think you guys, from the messages we get, this is definitely a top place for anyone that's wanting to travel in a van, which today has really shown us what we can do the last couple of days. You know, you can take your time, you can chill out, you can cook your own dinner, bring your own wine to the beach if you've got a van. The possibilities are endless. And on that ending note, we will... <laughs> how, how, do you want to go higher? <laughs> and on that ending note... We're just about to lose the sun, so I think we'll sign off. We've returned to the car park that we were in last night, just outside of Bosa, because it's nice and it's quiet enough here, uh, right next to the sea, and we're just, yeah, really enjoying ourselves. We don't really know what's gonna come next. But as always, thanks for watching it. I'm sure it'll be good, whatever it is, because Sardinia is just delivering on all fronts. Indeed, right. Cheers, my dears. See you in the next one.